a communist feminist film full of ginger headed transgenders pushing the gender ideology. <laughs> I knew that I would love the new Barbie movie way before I even saw it based purely on how conservatives have been describing it. Well, folks, I just got back from the theaters seeing Barbie. The Barbie movie is a preachy feminist screed about taking down the patriarchy. Uh, it's got just about everything. Margot Robbie, Ryan Gosling, and Chinese propaganda. And they're trying to kiss up to the Chinese Communist Party because they want to make money selling the movie in China. Let me tell you guys why I won't be heading this weekend to see the new Barbie movie. And if you guess because it's feminist garbage and it's really about hating men, then you would be correct. I'd rather jump feet first into a wood chipper than sit through that film. This movie is not just a piece of shit. This movie is a flaming piece of dog shit piled atop an entire dumpster on fire. It is a, it is a certainly a wonderful movie to show your daughter if you want your daughter to be a vapid man-hating harpy. Now, I'm going to be honest, I was pretty iffy about the new Barbie movie because I've had a pretty complex relationship with Barbie in general. As a trans woman, I was really not allowed to play with Barbie dolls. And the few times I got to play with Barbie dolls, it was one of my friends who had them. And we were definitely the kind of kids who threw dolls up in the sky and let them just fall where they fell. <laughs> I guess you could also say that because of my conservative upbringing, I didn't necessarily have some of the most favorable views of Barbie. I honestly looked at her as kind of silly. And to this day, I still really struggle wearing the color pink. Yes, I'm a goth and so I do enjoy wearing black, but pink is like a scary color to me. It's really hard for me to wear it without feeling kind of silly. I also have a lot of criticisms of Barbie as a cultural icon. I definitely at certain points have felt that Barbie probably wasn't the best toy for little girls. But recently I've observed a lot of Barbie's rebranding and I remember I first started watching Barbie's vlogs and they're actually quite great. And they also have been very deliberately trying to be more inclusive, especially when it comes to size. And I do find myself stopping in the doll section at Target and looking at the Barbies. And I did eventually purchase my first Barbie a couple of years ago. So I say all that to say that I walked into this movie with a pretty open mind. I think the only thing that I walked in kind of having feelings about was I actually thought it would be really interesting to see what sort of Barbie film Margot Robbie could be in. I walked into it kind of excited to see what it would be because I actually did hear from quite a few people that a lot of people liked it. In fact, more than a few people that I know in the goth community did indeed go to see Barbie all gothed up. And so I figured it probably was good because my friends have good taste, they're my friends. There's a part of me that really misses just watching very silly movies. I think we need more films like that, especially as our society turns the way that it turns. I. I was really excited to see it. I dressed up in all pink. The theater I went to was completely packed and there were quite a few people also wearing pink. And like, to me, it's pretty clear that this is a cultural moment. So I'm sure you guys know by now that I don't really do reviews without spoilers. So I will just let you guys know that I'm just gonna tell the entire story right now because I feel like we gotta summarize it before we criticize it. But before I jump into my plot summary, I wanted to let you guys know that this video is sponsored by my new merch. That's right, I've got new merch in my store, The Black Shop, and I am a pretty huge fan of it. I did something that I haven't done before when designing this merch. I put my face on things, and there are several different things that have my face on it. Over here, I have a pint glass that has my face on it. This is one of the designs. I just realized that it looks like I'm drinking pee, but I promise. I'm not drinking pee. And a lot of you guys requested stickers, so I actually did make some stickers and I'm a huge fan of these designs. A lot of you guys know that one of my standard um, onomatopoeias is da 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 da. So I decided to make merch out of it, cause why not? And this was the first piece of merch that I designed. It is beautiful and loved. That's my sign out. And I do have it in t-shirts and other things. And side note, let me know what else you guys want merch on because I can just apply all of these to different products, but I just did what I think people wanted. So yeah, I got a lot of really cool stuff in my store. Check it out. 
definitely helps me out a lot right now, especially after burying my mom. So thank you to everyone who's made a purchase so far. I am so happy that people like the new merch and I look forward to seeing you with it on. So if you do buy merch and wear it or have it, please upload those pictures to Instagram and tag me. I would love to see them. Anyway, let's get into my summary of the Barbie movie. So the movie starts with Barbie waking up in Barbie land. Everything is perfect and it becomes really clear that this is a society run by women. The president is a woman, the doctors are women, the construction workers are women. It is a, in many ways, matriarchal society. All of the Barbies live in their own fantastic show up and like do whatever Kens do, I guess. In this universe, Margot Robbie plays stereotypical Barbie, which is the white, blonde hair, blue eyed Barbie. And all of the other Barbies are also Barbie. They're just not the stereotypical Barbie. And the same thing applies to the Kens. Barbie goes through the cycle a few times of waking up every single day and everything being perfect until things start to change for her. She starts to get cellulite and her pointy feet are no longer pointy, but flat. And side note, I know some of y'all. Some of y'all were really enjoying that particular scene more than you should. I'm not kink shaming. I'm just saying that I see you. All the Barbies tell stereotypical Barbie to go to weird Barbie, who is essentially the kind of Barbie that I would have created as a kid. I remember we used to, we used to like throw these Barbies up in the air and just, girl, it was, we were abusing those Barbies. Someone should have called the Barbie Protection Association of America. Weird Barbies are essentially Barbies that have been messed with. And she's played by Kate McKinnon, I believe. I'm really bad at actors' names. And she is like permanently in the splits and her character is pretty funny. Weird Barbie explains to her that the reason why she's going through these changes is that the person playing with her, presumably a young girl, is not feeling happy. Now, an important point is that in Barbie land, because all of the women are successful and they are essentially supposed to be inspirations for young girls, the ideas that the Barbies have of the real human world is that all of the women are just so thankful for Barbie for solving all of the issues that women experience in society, right? So it's hard for them to comprehend why someone who plays with them would be sad. So Weird Barbie explains a complex way for her to get to the human world and she embarks on her journey to the human world. What she didn't know is that Ken had stowed away in her back seat and decided to go with her. Now, it's been established over and over again that stereotypical Barbie really doesn't want much to do with stereotypical Ken. She's kind of doing all this other stuff. Ken keeps, she has this vision of the person playing with her. And in that vision, it's revealed that she goes to Davy Crockett High School. So Barbie eventually makes it to David Crockett High School in the human world. And while she goes and tries to find the girl, Ken goes to the library to check out some books. She meets the girl who plays with her, whose name is Sasha. And Sasha is in the height of her angsty teenage phase. And she says basically what I would say to Barbie. She's like, you're a bad example for women. You're an image of fascism. You are nothing more than a misogynistic, fat phobic, fascist piece of shit, basically. And this just breaks Barbie because Barbie, again, is under the assumption that all of the girls in the real world would just be so thankful for her for like solving gender inequality. Now, while this is happening, Mattel eventually gets word from the FBI that Barbie is in the real world and they go to the high school to collect her. After Barbie storms off, she runs into some agents who say that they want to take her back to Mattel. So they usher her into the car. And as that's happening, Ken comes out of the library with a bunch of books about how men rule the world. Instead of trying to defend Barbie, he goes and decides to go back to Barbie land and tell everyone what he's learned. Also, while Barbie is being taken away, there is an employee at Mattel who also happens to be Sasha's mom picking up Sasha from school and she sees that Barbie's getting taken away and she decides to follow her. Back at Mattel headquarters, the CEO of Mattel tries to put Barbie back in a box and send her back to Barbie land. And she almost does it, but then decides to run away at the very last minute, running down the stairs and eventually running into the employee whose name is Gloria. She figures out pretty quickly that it wasn't actually Sasha that she was imagining, but Gloria. And Gloria was feeling pretty sad because of course, Sasha's having distance because she's going through her teenage angst phase. 
all three of them decide to run off back to Barbie land together in order to evade Mattel. And when they get back to Barbie land, things are quite different. Ken has taught everyone patriarchy. And so now all of the Barbies are basically like, oh my gosh, I can't wait to serve a man and be a wife and things. And it's like the complete opposite of what it was before. Even the president is like fetching some dude some beer, right? And stereotypical Ken has taken over stereotypical Barbie's house. And side note, there was a promotion happening for Barbie. It was like a a real life Barbie home and it was like renamed Ken. Ken land or something and I didn't actually understand it until I saw the movie that yeah that the reason why it was like that is because this is a plot point in the movie because Ken comes back to Barbie land with a very shoddy understanding of patriarchy and also masculinity like to him masculinity is basically horses and beer and Rocky in a fur coat like that is what he thinks masculinity is and it's pretty funny because even as he's performing it he doesn't clearly understand what it is nor does he really like it anyway barbie is really devastated by this change and she kind of decides to quit momentarily while this is happening sasha is very clearly starting to get closer and closer to her mom and she decides that she wants to go back and help the barbies take over barbie land once again and the way that they ultimately do that is by explaining to all of the barbies that women have complexities and they're not always perfect and that a lot of the pressure that women go under puts them in positions where they can't really win or lose. She kind of presents a very realistic foil to Barbie's idealism and that pulls the Barbies out of their patriarchal brainwashing and then the Barbies devise a plan to essentially make the Kens fight with each other. I won't give away the way they do this but it is actually really funny. I want to say this, if you are a woman who dates men, there are a lot of really funny like (laughs) moments that happen in this particular part of the film i i laughed i laughed so ultimately the barbies take back barbie land and when barbie is given the choice between remaining a doll and becoming a human she ultimately decides to become a human even though it is temporary and imperfect And that's essentially the Barbie movie. Now, with that description of the film, I'm sure some of you guys can understand where some of the conservative criticism is coming from. All of the men in this movie are indeed very silly and useless. That's not necessarily an inaccurate criticism to make. However, I think a lot of this criticism comes from like not understanding Barbie, frankly. Barbie has never been about Ken, right? Ken has always been a side character. I think the way you can really point that out is that very rarely do Kens actually have like hair that you can play with. It's almost always like molded to their head. I can't even think of any careers that Ken has ever had. Like, does Ken have career dolls? Unless he's kind of like hanging out with Barbie while she's working her business and working her job, doing her boss ass big shit. Like, I think that A lot of conservatives understand Barbie as this image of idealism, and they only really understand it through that lens, but they don't get that the creator of Barbie created these dolls because they wanted to give girls a larger range of understanding of who they could be. In the beginning, Barbie just seemed to be consumed with what she was wearing, just clothes. Connie, the whole concept of Barbie was that her clothing would permit the child to pretend they were in a certain kind of activity. The image you were projecting was someone who could play tennis and yeah, go to a prom yes, and yes. be a nurse, not yes. a doctor. I never dreamed of trying to change the world. I wanted to show the world as it is. And at that time, there were no women doctors. I think Barbie actually was a kind of of a pioneer in a positive way when she first came out. M.G. Lord was so consumed by the Barbie phenomenon that she studied the doll for three years. The result, her soon to be published book, Forever Barbie. What do you think Barbie represents? She was a rebel. Barbie was independent. Barbie didn't define herself by relationships of responsibility to men or to her family. Barbie pointed the way out of the kitchen. That's why Barbie's an astronaut and also a president and also a doctor and also all these other things, right? Like Barbie is about Barbie and 
that's why Barbie has this bright pink house full of all of her things and she presumably lives there alone. Barbie has always been about giving girls this idea that they could be whatever they wanted, even a mom. Like, I think a lot of conservatives wanted Ken to be this like multi-dimensional thought out character. And frankly, he is, but that's not Ken's characterization. Ken is there for Barbie. That's why all the promotional material said, and that's Ken, right? Like it's not about Ken. And I know that there's some people who are uncomfortable with that, but we have to think about this in terms of a film about the dolls, right? And honestly, I want to say that one of the things I did appreciate about this movie is that it was incredibly faithful to the dolls, right? This is really a celebration of Barbie in all of the various eras. And I can see how some people who only understand Barbie as a cultural icon might not have pieced it all together, but Barbie has always been an independent woman with her own money who maybe is also a mom from time to time, but She's more about her career. She is in so many ways, the feminist icon of the century. Now, to be clear about that particular point, I do think that the overall feminism of this movie, and I would argue Barbie in general, is indeed paper thin. Like there were definitely parts of this movie that I felt were really heavy handed, but I think it's because the movie was really trying to nail it home that it was about fighting against patriarchy, which I obviously am in support of. Even though it's a movie that is obviously satirizing a lot of these things, it definitely from time to time felt a little heavy handed. But I feel like with this being a comedy, I'm a little bit more forgiving of that. On the note of the strange politics of this movie, I definitely thought that this was a movie that was really critical and celebratory of Barbie as a brand. Will Ferrell's character is the CEO of Mattel and it's really clear that in the movie, they're criticizing this, right? They're criticizing that there is a man who is the CEO of Mattel. But in the real world, the CEO of Mattel is also a man. You know, I think there is probably something to be said about that. Why is it that this company that spreads all of these messages about female empowerment has so few women in power positions? And they don't really ever come around to talking about that. But I will say that the actual CEO of Mattel is in good humor when it comes to this. Basically, he said that while he takes the brand very seriously, the people let Mattel do not take themselves very seriously. So they were open for criticism. And I saw a post from one of my friends that was like, every criticism that you think you have of Barbie is indeed addressed in the movie. And for the most part, I think it's pretty, that's pretty accurate. The marketing for this movie was immense. I literally cannot avoid that Barbie song by Nicki Minaj. In fact, by the time you guys probably see this video, I will probably have posted a short where I'm using that song. <laughs> I, I will say that there is kind of something to be said about this. This is a film that is thriving under capitalism, right? Like it's lucrative for Mattel to be all about female empowerment. This film may have been overly critical of the patriarchy and yes, very loudly pro-feminist, but it's really only invested in that pro-feminist message as long as it's lucrative for them. And you know, as a leftist, I feel like it would be wrong for me not to point out that things like the patriarchy are indeed bedfellows with capitalism. At the same time, ultimately, it was a silly movie. And I feel like I could spend so much time raking over the shifty politics within this movie. But frankly, it was just a fun, silly time. And like I said, I kind of just want more of that. I want more fun, silly times. I found it really refreshing that this film had a silly spirit. And I think we need more like it, not less. Now, Hari Neff is a transgender woman and she is one of the Barbies. And I just wanted to take a little bit of time to talk a bit about that because I know that's one of the reasons why conservatives are so upset. As I was watching the movie, I kept waiting for really clear examples of Hari Neff being separated from the other Barbies, especially because there's this interesting thing that the Barbies and Kens do where they are just constantly switching partners and certain people flirt with this person and that person. And I was kind of wondering if they would show Hari Neff being desired or even 
being somebody who would also be impacted by the patriarchy. And they do. There's a scene where all of the Barbies are essentially dressed up in maid outfits because now they live to serve men and live for male validation. And Hari Neff is right there along with them. And I, I feel like that's something that really touched me personally because I'm somebody who I have had a really complex relationship with men in that way. It has taken me a lot of work to decentralize men from my life. And frankly, I am still working on that. I'm watching a lot of Mel Hamlet. Like there's a lot of things that I have to learn. And a lot of people make the assumption that trans women who date men don't deal with similar things. And I'm gonna just tell you that this is indeed a thing that I've had to work through, right? Work through my own internalized patriarchy and my lack of community with other women. Like this is all really important stuff that I am still learning, even though I feel like I've come a really far way, right? We could be so aware of gender in one way, but not in another, right? And it's taken me a while to understand that we definitely live in a society, hashtag, where I am pressured to be subservient to men, where I am pressured to not stand up for myself, where I'm pressured to not grab the things that I really deserve and believe that I deserve or just want. And I appreciated her inclusion in that way. And I just know that it pissed conservatives off. And I'm always up for that. And something I really appreciated, though I can see an argument against this, is that Hari Neff is just there with all of the Barbies. She's not the trans Barbie. She's not particularly singled out for being transgender. She's just there existing as all of the other women do. There's even a couple of scenes where Hari Neff is being intimate with some of the Kens. There's also a scene where stereotypical Ken looks at Hari Neff and tells her that she's beautiful and I just know that just pissed off a lot of conservatives also here's another thing I'm just gonna go off script a little bit does this film satirize men yes could you argue that it's misandry yes but you know what I'm really not interested in having a debate with you about misandry while we're having conversations about Roe v Wade being repealed and women are forced to give birth now like it kind of seems like a silly conversation to have right now, frankly, where we're supposed to spend yet again all of this time to put aside to talk about men and their feelings and their emotions while women around the country are dealing with their bodily autonomy being taken away from them. Like, it's just kind of silly to me. I get it, you can make the argument, but frankly, I don't care. Do I think that this film is in some ways really heavy handed? Sure, but you know what, in a way, there is something so punk rock about a film like this coming out right now during a time like right now, right? And the overall trend of Barbie core, of the embrace of bright pink, especially bright pink, not as weakness, but as something that makes you strong. Like going back to my thoughts about the color pink, I know that because of some experiences that I've had, Pink is kind of a color that makes me feel unsafe, right? Like I feel like when I wear it, it draws attention to me and it makes me look weak. And I feel like it's a color that I guess makes the world less safe for me. And it's been pretty cool seeing that color so often around the marketing of this film because there are so many people who have reclaimed it or have worn it in a way that makes it very clear that it's powerful and that it should not be taken lightly. And I kind of love that. I kind of love this unabashed embrace of femininity during a time like this. I think a lot of people right now are really hungry for something that's silly and something that feels like it's standing up for people that are being attacked right now, women especially. I think if you really wanted to, you really could overanalyze this film, right? Like there are issues, right? There are plot issues and world building issues, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But I did enjoy it. And you know what? This is the first movie that I've seen in a really long time where I was smiling, giggling, and laughing basically from the first second of the movie, right? It's just a fun movie. And I really think that you should view it that way. We can criticize the paper thin feminism. We can criticize the way that Barbie has impacted our society and the both positive and negative sides of it. But at the end of the day, it's just a fun movie. And here's a point I really wanna make. It's not a kid's movie. I think the one 
overarching criticism that I could probably have of this film is that it is not a kid's movie. And I can definitely see how some people might have thought it was. I would not take my very small child to go see this movie. I would take my teenager to go see this movie. Also, there's quite a few cultural references in the movie that make it pretty clear to me that it's not meant to be for kids. Like Grease is referenced throughout. They also have a studio dance number based on Grease. Do kids even know about Grease? Is that a thing? Are they watching Grease? They know anything about Grease Lightning? There's a lot of sex jokes and innuendo and things that make it pretty clear to me that it's not for kids. And I don't think it was made for kids. I think it was more so made for women who are my age, who were at some point girls who played with Barbies, right? And for me, it really landed. Like, even as a person who didn't grow up with Barbies, I still remember so many Barbies from commercials and just my cursory doll research that I've done, because sometimes I go down (laughs) these internet rabbit holes. It was a great celebration of the brand, and I just thought it was a really fun movie. And I think that if you haven't seen it, you probably should go see it. It was definitely a fun time, but I can see how it can conservative would hate it. It is, I would say, very finely distilled conservative rage bait. It just, it really hits all those points. Anyway, on that note, I will talk to you guys later. I want you guys to always remember and to never forget that you are beautiful and you are loved. Except Ben Ben Shapiro. No Ben Shapiro. Ben Shapiro, you ain't beautiful. You ain't loved. Your mama might say that, but I'm not gonna. Anyway, (laughs) bye.